Good morning, beloved. Welcome to our Sunday church. Uh, if you're uh, logging on Zoom, uh, write to us if you find us online. If you want to join us live on Zoom, uh, handle on Facebook is at Beloved Sons of God. Uh, so if you write to us, then we'll add you. We have an international WhatsApp group uh, where you get uh, Zoom links and updates of all our services. If you live in Bombay and you want to be part of us, again, write to us and we'll tell you how that how that happens where we gather. Uh, also, below this video is a PDF file. So if you click on it, uh, you know, it's going to open up to all the scripture verses I'm taking today. So uh, I've been speaking on, um, what have I been speaking on? Dating yes, dating and marriage, the father's way. Okay, so I've been taking some things, uh, uh, a lot of things from the word. Uh, I told you last week here, part one, this is part two. Um, the world presents some sort of wisdom in this area about dating and marriage, okay? But not necessarily the wisdom that comes from the world will lead to life. If it's not God's way, then at some point that wisdom, or if you follow that, is going to lead to, to death, okay? And so as sons, how do we go about these things? Because I took this sermon because I had so, we have so many young people in Beloved, you know, and a lot of singles also now. And, uh, you know, they're dating or they don't know and they sort of like want to know what, what to do. And so I, I thought I should take this uh, during this time. I also get people who write to me about marriages and things that are happening in their marriages. Um, so just good counsel uh, for them. I'm seeing some new, new uh, faces that have come after a long time. So I'm saying hello. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So I drew last time I ended with that. Can I have that board up? How many remember? We talked about flesh and spirit. Oh, 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 I hope it's not wiped out. Okay. I will draw it again. Okay, just one bit and I'll write that. Okay, I'll write that. Oneness and can everyone see this? I think it's a little down. Okay, one second. Yeah, that's a little crooked. It needs to go behind this. Yeah, push it down. Yeah, can everyone see this? Our lights are a little dim. Next time we'll have brighter lights. Can everyone read that? Okay, so let's begin. Let's get into the word. Beloved is awake yes. and alive. Yeah, we have the spirit of understanding for all things. Okay, so um, I'm going to begin with Romans 8. I was talking about flesh and spirit. And what does the world's wisdom look like? Okay, and so I've covered, I've made two little circles here that talks about things, what the world uh, does in dating or like, uh, you know, calls wisdom. And at some point, it's going to lead to death. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the verse and then I'm going to go there. So let's just read Romans 8. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, okay, what is flesh? Flesh is any part of you that has that is independent of God. It says that Sarah in the flesh, she told Abraham, you know what, take Hagar and have a child from Hagar because God had promised them that you're going to have a baby. I'm going to bless you with a baby. But she gets tired of waiting and so she tries to help God and so she does something in the flesh. And that unaided, where it's not of God, she went to do something, to quicken something, and to date, the, we are living by it. Okay, an entire generation, an entire religion came out of that act. Okay, through that act came Ishmael, and through that comes uh, Muhammad, and you know, the whole the Muslim generation, okay, of faith comes from that. But it's called something that was done independent of, independent of God. Okay, so flesh is anything that is not, that is from your five senses, what you see, what you're reasoning. And so logically you're saying that, no, this is, this is good. And that is the flesh, okay? It means all your reasoning. Adam did that, right? Adam reasoned when God told him, don't eat out of this tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it's not good for you. Eat out of any tree. And there was the tree of life also, but just don't eat out of this tree. And what happened? He began to reason and go with sight and trying to make decisions for himself unaided by God. That is flesh. Okay? And so it's independent of God. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, the fruit, it was good at sight because the Bible says it was good for sight. But was it good to eat? It was not good to eat. I went to Maldives recently. I put a fruit on the group. It, I said this is definitely from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It looked good. I ate it. It was yuck. 
it was disgusting from inside. And I said, this is what the fruit looks like, okay? Good to sight, not good to eat. If God wants to give you somebody, he'll give you who's good on the outside and good on the inside, okay? God makes all beautiful things. Everything that God made, God said it was good to look at and good for you, okay? Things that come in death, sex before marriage. God ordained, but God didn't make sex. God made oneness. That's what he designed, okay? The devil perverts everything. And so everything after the fall got perverted. And so there's sex before marriage. There is lust. We talked about lust. Love is patient. Love waits. Any guy, any girl wants you to do things quickly. No, now or never. You think like you're going to lose this. If I don't do it now, this guy will go. If I don't do this now, this girl will go. Let them go. Because love waits. And love is patient. Lust is impulsive. I want it now. Okay? And all of that will lead to death at some point. Live in relationship. What is live in relationship? We have that today, right? It looks so much of wisdom. Oh, live with them and see if it works out. Let's go ahead and then we'll, we'll see if it, we'll live together and we'll see how we are getting along. Everything is, doesn't require faith. Everything is going by your own perception and your own understanding and reasoning. And I've seen so many couples who do that and today they're divorced. And they did it all through world's wisdom, but it didn't work out. Why? Because it was unaided, not because of him, okay? And the way of the sun is different, and we're gonna talk about that today. We don't go by the patterns and cycles of the world. Just because you see your friends getting married at a certain age, at 23, we talked about this last time, 23, 24, they're getting married, at 27, they'll have a child, they'll have a baby, and it's by the system and the clock of the world. And as a son, you're outside time and you can just learn to enjoy. We talked about in the last sermon of how it was God's will that man should not be alone. But when you're in Christ, you can also say that I'm not alone. He is with you. So for some who want to be, be alone, you can't be alone because Christ is in you. And I'm talking about just being single and if you don't want to get married. If you want to get married, God's put that desire. That's good too. Both are good, okay? We talked about... I didn't cover this, social media love, okay? Where everything is on Instagram and you have your friends boasting about the love for each other with hearts and everything and how many likes you get. And you know, it can draw you and you can land up judging your own relationship by someone else's page or Instagram account, okay? And as a son, we don't allow ourselves to get sucked in by the patterns and cycles of the world because it will still lead to death. If the husband doesn't post another picture of the wife the next day, she might get rid of it. But you who don't may not have that because it was never meant for the world. It's meant that love for each other, not for the world's likes. Okay? Carnal. So that talks about, I read, it says, let me see, read that again. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, that means they're led from inside the things of the spirit. That means what God says about them. For to be carnally minded... To go by the world's pattern and wisdom is death. But to be spiritually minded, you go by the Father's ways. The Father's way might take time, but it will lead to life. Which one do you want? You want life, okay? To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So carnal, we are not carnal, we love in spirit and in truth. I've seen many sons, their relationship actually became better when sometimes the, the girls in the relationship, I started telling them, do you know that you're a wife second, you're a woman second, you're a mother second, you're a son first. And start taking a position as a son. Then there will be balance in your household. Because, see, a woman may not want to make the move first. She'll wait for the guy. But if you're a son, then you are a life-giving spirit. And you might want to go and say hello first. Now, I disagree with a lot of the world's ways is because you are a life, you have to see you come into the position that you're a life-giving spirit. And sometimes in a relationship, you're just talking. If that person is not saved, who's waiting on who? You are the savior. You will probably go and give some life. And that person is going to get that life out of you. So if you box yourself in the identity of a woman, 
you're going to do things very differently if you come into the identity of a son hear the message on lion king all things will come into order in your household i have seen many many testimonies when i told the woman start speaking up because you're a son first when the husbands didn't know uh, you know about jesus i said open your mouth but they were like no but submit to your husband i said no you're a son first just start speaking your mouth for the truth even as they started opening their mouth about what is the truth the children started listening and the husband is also taking life from the wife now and because now she is a life giving spirit you've come into the identity of a son so first we see ourselves as sons first then we can do a lot of the things you're doing the cooking and you might be doing everything as husbands are going and you know working doing getting the money but as a son you're you all are both life giving spirits so you'll you'll will both be providers <laughs> you're not really latching on or oh, husband provide yeah you'll do that if you see yourself in the identity of a wife and as a woman but if you are coming to the identity of a son the son is a provider in any household in my household everyone is a provider because they're all sons my mother also provides my brother provides <clears throat> i also provide because you're life giving spirits see yourselves as sons first and then we do all the activities but your sons first that's why then it's not only the husband who expects the wife to do the dishes if you all are both life giving spirits you all will both do the dishes you all will both do the laundry okay you are understanding because you are life giving spirits okay so let's look at um, okay so just taking some wisdom okay i'm going to cover a little bit dating and then go into uh, marriage we spoke about so someone asked me like uh, what do you do okay uh, you know i want to get married and so <clears throat> uh should i go somewhere should i look look at what uh, i read uh, last week i read from uh, i read from isaac okay i took genesis 20 24 we read about esther's life and then we read about ruth's life okay all of them once you become a son of god your whole life is fathered fathered you learn to rest that it is a finished work now in all of this i love what uh, you know let's take what the servant prayed okay when abraham says go and take a wife for isaac the servant said in genesis 24 verse 12 then he said o lord god of my master abraham please give me success this day and show kindness to my master abraham okay and then he said behold here i stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water now let it be that the young woman whom i say please let down your pitcher that i may drink and she says drink and i will also give your camels a drink that means not only you water i'll give your camels also water let her be the one you have appointed for your servant isaac and by this i know that you have shown kindness to my master that means you have shown grace to your master what did the servant pray he was just praying for give me success today i am going out by this well where a lot of the ladies of the village are coming you give me success and that word success is kara kara means right place right time right happenings that are only caused by the father now so i was i was reading this and i i heard also a few people on uh, you know marriage and dating and then so i was i was thinking i was like okay and so some said you know you pray for kara right place right time just give me success but do you know as a son of god you came into the kara of your father it's a rest it is a finished work like my mother was sharing this testimony what is it that she wants something to wear something so specific and she goes to the shop on the day and it's not been available for 2 years but on the day that she decided to go the stock had just come in the size that is only for her how fathered are you how in the kara right place and right time are you so as sons what to do was he sitting and praying just in his home i told you as a son just do what's in front of you your whole life is fathered so for him he went to a well maybe some want to go on a dating site and that's fine you can go there for some maybe just in your workplace and then god orchestrates the right place right time because as a son your whole life is led you can't put it in a box for some one work for the other it was just at the workplace or oh, i just went to the mall i bumped into somebody but what is your rest that your whole life is finished and fathered 
okay and what is the number one thing that you look at okay so i was reading this for single what is the what does a guy look for in a girl what does the bible say guys look for in a girl okay let's read proverbs 19 i haven't put it there but i'm just going to open it if you have your apps proverbs 19 proverbs 19 okay verse 22 it says what is desired what does a girl look for in a guy okay what should you look for what is desired in a man is kindness haseth grace look for a guy that is graceful that gives grace because there might be many times that you're going to piss each other off during the marriage and then you'll need somebody who's not quoting you scripture but is just giving you grace i've i've known people okay i've had um, I've interacted with some couples and the guy knows scripture by the T about grace, about the finished work, everything. But when they fight, I don't know what happens. You know, and I've seen somebody else, they don't know scripture by the T about the finished work, but the guy is just graceful. And when they fight, he's just so quick to say sorry. And then I realized is grace is not something you understand. Grace is a person. His name is Jesus. It says grace and truth came by Jesus. Okay? Look for somebody who is extending grace. Just the way even she extended grace to him. She, Rebecca gave him water and the camel's water. Went the extra mile. So you're looking for somebody just to a graceful person who is just graceful. Is, uh, what is the meaning of grace? Loving kindness. It says unmerited favor, just giving favor, undeserved when you don't deserve it. But it's really loving kindness, that God is loving and kind towards you, a kind person. What does it tell men to look out for in a woman? She better be good looking. By the way, whenever God brings somebody to the guy and to the girl, they've always said that they were beautiful. They're beautiful in your eyes. Okay, I shared this, uh, an example last week about that. Uh, let's look at it in verse... Uh, where was I? In verse 22. What is desired in a man is kindness. Yeah, what does a guy look for? Sorry. I was in verse... Um, I haven't put that down. Yeah, it's in verse 14. Houses and riches are an inheritance from the father, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. And this word prudent is sakal, meaning wisdom. Guys, you're going to need a lot of wisdom in your marriage. It's fine to be drawn to that person, but after some time, wisdom will get you ahead. In fact, it says that by wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. That's what it says in, in, in the Bible. And so a lot of things, sometimes when I'm even talking to husbands and wife, sometimes I feel like you just need wisdom. Look for a wife who is giving you wisdom, not from the world, but from the word. Okay? A wise woman. Because she will keep all things, even handling children. I remember my mom, um, you know, she's a wise woman. I've seen them when dad and mom were together. Now, she's not even read the Bible. But every time dad would come home from work, she would put the kids out and say, this is papa and me time and you will not interrupt. And they would go in the room and sit and talk for like maybe half an hour or one hour. And dad would tell her all the things that happened in the day. And then she would give him counsel. And as much as my dad went, he was so dependent on her. My dad used to call us the puppy dog. So when the big dog starts barking, the puppies, without even listening, just start barking. Because I like to say that we were always on her side. Because we used to just know that whatever mom does is right. You've got it wrong. So we used to not even think in a lot of things. Okay? But I'm just saying that wisdom, and I've seen that, yeah, my mom is beautiful. And, you know, she's got all uh, the lovely things that a woman should have. But I saw that what held the marriage together through the tough times is because she was a woman of wisdom. And my dad saw that in her. A confidence that she had that she didn't care about the other women, but she just knew that her words, like my dad will not go anywhere. Okay? And wisdom holds that. And that is something I always tell you when you all are meeting each other. Flesh will wear out. But get the person to get hooked on to the life in you. Because that life in the kingdom never dies. Life only keeps growing more and more and more. It keeps getting multiplied. So guess what's happening? If you get them hooked on the flesh, you look attractive and that's okay. But after some time, 
it's not going to multiply. But what will multiply? Wisdom. Wisdom and the life that you have. And then that love is just going to go stronger and stronger because you're just driving that life out of each other. Okay? And that life holds you. So what way do you want it? The world's way? No. You want it God's way. Okay? You like somebody, it's fine. Get them, talk about Jesus, open your mouth. Let them know about the Father. Because I told you last time for, uh, for all the singles, what do you say? No one can come to me unless the Father draws them. If they don't know about the Father, if you don't open your mouth and tell them about Jesus, how will you know? But so one person might run away, let him run away. Because, you know, in the, in the word it says, in um, John 3.17, John 3.16, Jesus came, <clears throat> what is John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? And then it says, God didn't send his son in the world to condemn but that through him they might be saved. And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world and those who did not like the light did not come to him. There is light in you. The ones who do not want the light have nothing wanting to do with the light, they'll run. The ones who have nothing to hide, they'll come. And I don't mean by being sinners and not sinners. All sinners came to Christ. They came to get saved. The Father will give you another son. So rest. But be open about, about your Father. Talk about Jesus and then they'll latch on to the life in you. Your whole life is a finished work. And same it will be about the person that is getting added on to you. Okay? Now let's... Um, so just a little bit of wisdom there in those things. Let's go down to... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about... Uh, Jesus and what he looks like. What does his love look like? Okay, but I'm going to talk about that a little later. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 6. It says, do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them, inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and... How do you pronounce that? Belial, Satan. Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So come out from among unbelievers and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. And I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Your God gives you simple wisdom. Do not be unequally yoked. Now this doesn't mean where you're just looking for people who are saved. I know a lot of people who went into a marriage they didn't know about Christ. But before, I'm talking about when they were quoting, because they saw that person, they got that person in the faith, told them about the Father. You might want something with your head knowledge and say, this guy loves you. Trust me, it's still in the flesh if he doesn't know about Christ. Because later on, what will keep is not the flesh, it is Christ who is holding everything together. You will only get tired. You will get fed up. It will be, how much can you talk about your job? How much can you talk about Bollywood? About the actresses? How much can you talk about the car on the road? It'll be dull. It's carnal talk. But talk, sit with somebody and talk about revelations about the Father. You can just go on and on and it just doesn't end. I have sat with people who may not look attractive on the outside. And then they open their mouth and talk about the Lord. And suddenly they're so full of life and you just are so drawn to them and you wonder what it is. It's life. And life never ends. Life and life more abundantly. Jesus, what drew everyone to Jesus? Some say that he was very good looking. Some say he was average looking. But what kept everyone with him? He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. It's life. And after some time, you want more of that life-giving spirit. That's how everything is held together. Okay, so it's one thing. It's okay if that person doesn't know and you like that person. But share about Jesus. Bring them to where you are and then don't let them get attached to your relationship with him. Oh, you pray. Oh, you pray. No, no, no. 
let them have their own individual relationship with the father get them secured in that first so till then you're just sharing about the lord you like the person yeah let them let them introduce them to the father bring them if you want to the bible studies let them come to church let them just engage in their own relationship be independent because tomorrow if you have a fight they will not go away because of you they will still stand because it was not built on you it's built on their own relationship okay that happens in my family my brother my mom i say bad things you've heard me say bad things to them but their relationship stands because it's not built on priya it's built on christ okay so um, we should not say bad things okay S uh, okay yeah then signs signs oh this is one okay and i I've, i've been in that um in the church world okay God will now you're a son all our sons here you believe in Christ you became a son of God okay um everything about a son of God in the old it says that I will give them one heart a new heart I will write on their heart and I will cause them to walk in their in my ways okay everything about a son is inside out God will never give you a dream if you don't like somebody or a sign in the sky and say this is the one he doesn't work like that the flesh and i believe the devil works like that and i've seen a lot of people fall into this including me okay and i was deceived and uh, a lot of the church world still still preaches this and i feel that you can get deceived by signs by things because everything to do with signs and everything external is all something that is unaided by him It's one thing to like somebody and that you know you really desire and that person also likes you and then God confirms with something that's another thing. But to blindly go where you don't like that person at all but you feel like no God has told me it's this and to date I've seen those marriages that have built on that they're just like still going through like a lot of counseling with them a lot of people just it's almost like the church trying to hold it and force it together to keep them together because I feel it was it was just done on signs and uh you know everything outside when the voice came to jesus okay when jesus spoke when it's uh when god spoke about jesus the second time he said this is my son hear him when he was with all his disciples jesus said this voice didn't come for me it came for you jesus doesn't need any sign he is the sign post he is not looking the sun is not looking for a sign i have been in a place where i liked this guy i was in nottingham <clears throat> i liked him for the longest time and i believed i liked him and 5 years later and god had given me a dream that time he'd get into drugs and it life would be a mess he's not good for you okay something like that anyways i forgot about him i came back to india 5 years later i think i've shared this before i go to new york and i literally felt the lord push me to meet him so i'm telling god i said you know i've forgotten about him isn't it a good thing like i might like him again now i've gotten over him but i was pushed and then the minute i saw him i didn't want him and see i had believed something for so long that my mind and my heart couldn't come into agreement that i'm okay with me not wanting it and still for the whole year i was crying and i still thought he is the one and but i just didn't have anything in my heart but i thought like with signs and everything oh he's the guy and i should have just gone with my heart because god for a son is working inside out okay and long story um uh, you know i came to know that he was in drugs imagine god showed this to me 5 years ago when he wasn't even doing drugs i shared about the lord and he didn't want anything to do with jesus i was sending him scriptures he blocked me you know and because i really thought he's the guy so i've done something really i've done very foolish things in my life okay but um, uh, you know it's still it's it's okay if they thought i was a psycho but uh, but i should have just listened to my heart and there was nothing inside for him but what happened is for the longest time i believed a lie and then i had to come to terms with that hey priya you don't want it so why did god take me there because if he didn't take me there i would have still believed that i didn't i like something and i didn't have it he wanted to show me i presented it back to you a few years later you don't want it so today i have nothing in my heart that says oh god kept something no i don't i don't want it anyways okay and uh, god uh, you know i had to forgive him his life was a mess god showed me because um, because uh, uh, you know he had hurt me 
okay and so i had to forgive him and after i forgave him that year he met somebody and he got married okay and i'm happy but i'm still blocked but it's okay uh you know i'm just saying but it there was a lot of signs and wonders and everything and everything said he is the one he is the one but he wasn't the one and then i realized if he was the one god would put love and grace and favor in my heart for him okay and that's how god works how do you know if you like something if it's in the flesh of it's really him in you how do you know that he'll show it to you if it's not you have all of these things and if you go and just speak and maybe that person doesn't feel the same way okay fine just go god has you know when the abraham servant went there were many women by the well and then he said who is the one that you've appointed for me that you will give grace and favor that they're going to put in that person's heart for you okay so just uh, just flow with the one just believe that the person that god has for you god is the one who's putting grace and favor in their heart for each other okay and just move ahead in that okay so don't stay so uh, you want to go on a dating site look for somebody who's open you want to be at work it's okay to say hello <clears throat> okay just be a life giving spirit be a son first okay be in the identity of a son um let's talk about okay let's go ahead let's look at galatians 5 okay so what is flesh and what is spirit okay so you're telling me priya you talk about flesh how do i know something is flesh and not me So let's read Galatians 5. So I say let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Okay now let me go ahead. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. So what are the desires? What is what does flesh look like? Sexual immorality. Everyone knows what sexual immorality is? Okay. Sex outside marriage or uh, <clears throat> adultery, impurity, lustful pleasures. This word lustful pleasures in Greek is actually filthy language. When I say bad things out of my mouth, if i say bad things or i abuse somebody that's not the spirit that's the flesh okay bodily movements in sensuality this is all in greek i've taken what that means it's luring somebody by your body you see that in the bible i think it's in delilah am i correct samson and delilah okay or who was drawing samson by her body okay bodily movement sensuality idolatry you know what idolatry is right idol worship sorcery it actually means sorcery also means drug abuse magic hostility that means hatred quarreling jealousy outbursts of anger flesh selfish ambition okay that's not god aided it's it's good to have ambition i have but i've realized after i came like before my mom knows it in my family i was supposed to be like the very ambitious one about like wanting to be this top fashion designer everything but the minute i met jesus everything changed and it all became about him and he became first and i don't i didn't even think of starting a church 20 years ago it was just about my relationship with him was more important my me time and so i wouldn't take on projects if i got busy and then i realized when he was i was all about him he made it all about me I'm still successful in my industry but I didn't choose to be it came pursuing me I went on it's not selfish ambition it was almost just having my oneness with the father enjoying my time and then the very things that you desire are actually lined up for you but he doesn't want them to be the number one in your life okay because he's jealous about your heart and your attention so hostility quarreling jealousy outbursts of anger selfish ambition dissension that means division okay uh, someone who's constantly dividing in your family even as loved ones when in india we have extended family be a person who's holding the family together not the person who's dividing now holding the family together does not mean come in lots let's all live together i told you god's wisdom if you got married if you're going to get married please live nuclear independently husband wife even if you love your mother it doesn't mean if you live by yourself and your mother is not living with you that you don't love her if you do it god's way first 
God will bless you. I've seen this many times. I tell them, first you decide. Do you want this? The minute they decide, suddenly the husband gets a promotion or the wife gets a promotion, there is enough money, they're even taking care of their loved ones. And they're able to do that. Or whether they got an other house for them or renting it out. But it came when they just decided to go ahead with the truth first. Okay? <clears throat> Look at this. Be the one that is a peacemaker in the family. Sometimes it's not about winning the argument. Sometimes it's just about what will happen at the end of winning the argument. <laughs> will you lose the person? Right? So, so sometimes, you know, people, uh, we don't have a culture of uh, in beloved about scriptures. We get irritated actually. If someone comes to me and points out scriptures, I don't, I don't like it at all. Because Jesus is not a scripture. He is a person. And all word talks about him. He's born of the word. Sometimes you embrace the person of Jesus and all scripture does is show you who he is. The Pharisees knew all scripture. But when Jesus showed up, they couldn't recognize him. What was the use of the scripture? Okay, you are led in all things. So sometimes people come with me, I said, this is, I, sometimes I have all the answers. I choose not to give them. I just choose not to because the heart doesn't want to receive. The heart wants to argue. So I, even if I have all the answers, I'm going to give it to you. Okay, the word actually says, it doesn't say he who reads. It says he who hears, hears, more will be given. But he who doesn't hear, what he has will be taken away. That means if the loving kindness and grace, the truth, has come to you and you refute it, even what you have will be taken away and then you can dig up all scripture and you will not see what others are seeing because you chose it. I've seen that. Okay? Now see this. Um, <clears throat> division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living like that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. That means the inheritance, okay? The life that God, ha God has for you. It's not talking about salvation. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What does, what does the Holy Spirit's fruit look like? Love, joy, Peace, peace, say sorry first to save the argument, go hug your wife, buy her good things. You know, you see how Jesus loves? Jesus just didn't say, I love you. He came and showed how much he loved you. It's one thing to speak, I love you. It's another thing to do. Sometimes your doing speaks much more than your words. Okay? But love goes with speaking and doing. It's a marriage of both. Okay? Love, joy, peace, patience. Be patient with one another. Okay? Kindness, goodness. Love is faithful. Look for somebody who's faithful, who's keeping on dating. You've been in a relationship or one, but he's still not decided. He's not sure about you. You don't want to be with the person. Okay? Because love is faithful. Love looks, I remember my sister and my brother, uh, brother-in-law when they got married, he knew he wanted to be with her the day he met her. He wanted to marry her. That's it. And my sister was like, who, I've never seen like this. Like, you want to marry me? You know? And from that day on, it's, it, it, it was like he was roaming around with a ring for the longest time, for the two years that they were, uh, uh, you know, dating. But uh, he just wanted to be, be with her. He had decided, okay? The father is so good to you. Imagine after you came into the kingdom, how many times have you messed up? Does he choose to be good to you one day, bad to you one day? No, love is a decision. Love is faithful. Love is kind. He chooses to be in love with you by blood. <laughs> That's what marriage is. That's what oneness is, that you choose to be with each other because of my blood covenant with you. I'm going to be with you. Just like your father, okay? Love is faithful. Love is gentle. Love is self-control not sex now i want it now and this is love and if not then this is no no no. that's lust and even if you do it i'm telling you the guy or the girl it'll lead to death either he or she will leave you if you get married after marriage you'll have problems i've seen that happen okay it goes into adultery or whatever it came because you didn't do it god's way first if you're married and you still didn't abide by this you you did that right now just say father i just bring it to you i just thank you i'm washed by your blood 
okay when i became a son i become a virgin i thank you that you are holding my marriage together your blood holds my marriage together okay uh, you know in life there is uh, righteousness the gift of righteousness you know what the curse was in the bible after adam fell one of the curses okay is that you will get married to somebody and your husband will lay with another wife adultery is a curse that came in righteousness all things are held together by the blood so sarah and i see this in sarah's life and i shared it last time abram was with sarah to save his neck and face he tells sarah lie to abimelech that king and say you're my sister because you're too beautiful if he looks at you and if he thinks i'm married to you he'll kill me he'll take you sarah goes husband has said i'm going but i believe sarah was just really pissed at abraham for doing that but who kept sarah it says god showed up in abimelech's dream and said the woman you're taking is someone else's wife and if you touch her you're a dead man abimelech gets up and said i didn't know he told me she is his sister okay and that's why god tells him even i kept you from sinning so i am also telling you the truth she is someone else's wife please give her back and i'll open up all the wombs of this country because i've closed all the wombs no reproduction no multiplication okay and then god restored her abraham prayed for prayed for uh, <clears throat> abimelech but who kept him faithful the father did righteousness it says that abraham was a righteous man god declared him righteousness one of the gifts of righteousness there's no adultery rest in your gift that father i thank you by the blood because of your blood you will see that my husband is faithful to me i am faithful to my husband you hold my marriage together it's the gift of righteousness okay i've never heard anyone speak this but i've seen this okay righteousness holds all things together um yeah and i told you so as a son it's not he is the one she is the one christ in you he'll work inside out okay if if he'll give you the desire first and then you know you can go ahead and think she's the one or whatever you choose uh okay let's look at ephesians 5 for married couples here okay uh, let me quickly read what does jesus's love look like so jesus is a life giving spirit you are a life giving spirit jesus's love builds each other edifies he doesn't go and tell the dead person oh how dead are you did he go and say that he although he did go and tell the blind man what do you want <laughs> he's blind what do you want what do you want me to do for you like <laughs> open my eyes <laughs> okay but um, love builds each other edify each other okay love speaks love does jesus spoke jesus did he came he died for you on the cross so if you love somebody go the extra mile i really believe sometimes when you just love the person obviously the wife will cook for you because you are loving her so much the last thing the wife wants to do is let me go commit adultery <laughs> she's not thinking like that love if you're loving each other each one will land up submitting to each other because you're genuinely just loving each other okay i believe also scripture is for you you read it so that you can change it not to slam each other with it you see it you read it let it change you and then bring everything just know as a son it's not a marriage of two it's a marriage of three the father is with you in all things and so you can have a relationship with the father i told you in all things here the lion king message in all relationships if you don't forget you are a son first those relationships will be very balanced where you forgotten your identity you were a son but then you came into that whole relationship of trying to be a wife now if you are in a wife you want to get everything out of the husband then it's just gone topsy turvy if you come into the position of a son you won't need anything because you are the life giving spirit you'll realize everything is coming from the father you'll see it there's a balance that comes back to it don't make your foundation on the man don't make your foundation on the husband let your foundation be in your relationship with your heavenly father okay it will not collapse it will stand I love all the testimonies that are coming in beloved strives to be a church that we are bringing you back into your independent relationship with your father okay i was at uh, in maldives just now some of the testimonies that you all share are so cool okay so um, sometimes i see all these you know the old man is getting is already crucified with christ but i see it act so i learned to swim on my own many years ago so i go i wanted to do snorkeling and i wanted to do scuba diving 
So I had this instructor who was less of an instructor. Okay, and uh, they started teach, teaching me uh, scuba diving. Anyway, so I, I decided after some time to do some snorkeling. And I told him, I said, keep an eye out. Because I know how to swim, but I also don't know how to swim. It's like weird. I know the f backstroke, but I don't know the front. It's funny. So I was going in, and then suddenly I was snorkeling. I was enjoying all the beautiful life that I was seeing down, all the lovely fish. And then that water went in my pipe. And I don't know what happened, and then it came in my mouth. And now I'm thinking I'm in the shallow, but I've wandered off in a little deep. And now I can't touch my feet down. And now, OK, I know I'm drowning. And then I this jigger's dream, the sun can't drown, OK? And all that is going on. But you know what? And I'm yelling his name. His name was Juice. I'm like, Juice. And he, he can't hear me. And I am so angry. And they're just walking around like this. I'm like, and you know what happens when you're, you're, you can't, you, you begin to like get uh, um, stiff, your body, because you get anxious, right? So now I'm thinking, and I know that it's not my time. And like, you know, I'm a son, everything. Trust me, you know what word came? Do you know what Christ in me said? He said, Priya, I literally heard this, okay? <laughs> because I said it to myself. Priya, relax. So what I did, uh, because when I started doing that, I got a pull in my foot, in my right foot. You know when you get a pull. OK, so like I was too, and now so my one foot is not working. I'm drowning, and I have that, that snorkeling thing. So you can't even breathe properly, you know? And I can't do it with my hand. So he can't hear me. I'm saying, juice, juice, going down, juice. And then the next thing, you know, I said, Priya, relax. And then I know that I know the backstroke. So I just decided to relax like this and float. And so my body came up. And then with my one hand, because my right foot is not working, I did this, this, this. And I am like, in my mind, I'm cursing those two, th <laughs> those, OK? And like, they are not doing the job. So I go, I, I reach up to like five minutes. My whole body is stiff, and I, I land back on the shore. How that happened? And then this guy comes, and I, hey, all good. <laughs> I was so mad. But then I realized I don't need him. Yeah, and I said, yeah, all good, OK? And like he, he didn't even know what happened. I didn't bother to talk about it, nothing. And uh, really, in that moment, the words that came to me, Christ told me, Priya, relax. Just relax. So even as I relaxed, I was like, oh, you know? And I relaxed, I began to float. <laughs> and then I realized the water is holding you. It's, it's like, it was amazing, okay? Anyways, I was on the show. They didn't know what happened. But, uh, you know, your life is so fathered. And then I see so many times, I told you once I was in Nottingham, I swallowed a plum. My friends started making fun. I couldn't breathe. And then they thought I was acting, but I was choking. And then I felt two hands come and push inside, and this plum came out. And when he said, like, you know, all okay, everything cool, and, uh, you know, I could have given him a lecture. Like, you're supposed to look out for people here. They don't, they, in Maldives, they don't care. You're at your own risk. They, because they don't have enough staff to, to look for things like that. But then I realized that life is so fathered. And that it's Christ in you and Christ in me just told me, Priya, relax. <laughs> you're not drowning. Relax, I've got this. Just ease out. So I ease out. And I began to float. And then the water took me on the, uh, on the show. And yeah, did I want to give him a piece of my mind? But I didn't. OK? Uh, as sons, we submit to the truth in each other. I know married couples where it says submit. So just don't blindly do what the guy is telling you or the girl is telling you if it's not in the word. OK? Uh, it, and this is especially happens if the other person is not yet saved. So if the guy is telling you to do some other things or get some other woman in, in your marriage and all, obviously you're going to put your foot down. OK? We submit to the truth in each other. That's what you do. Submit to the truth in each other. And what is the truth? Look up the word. OK? Jesus shows off. Sin hides. I know couples, if you're in a relationship where the guy doesn't want to tell the world he's with you, or you're with the girl, and the girl doesn't want to tell. Now, I understand when well, you're uh, meeting each other, and for some time, you want to keep it private, and it's a common decision. But if there's something, because sin hides, love doesn't. You want to tell the whole world. OK, and celebrate it. Um, <clears throat> Jesus celebrates you. I remember once I was sleeping, I woke up with an audible voice. And he said, all I do is celebrate you. That's why I like to throw a party for everybody. Or the best way, if the father sent his most prized possession, Christ, his most expensive thing, he spent it on you 
to buy you back. How much more should you celebrate yourself? And I believe if you learn to celebrate yourself, pamper yourself, love yourself, keep yourself, value yourself, he'll add more things to you because you're taking so good care of my most prized possession. I'm going to give you. So celebrate yourself, okay? Um, let's get into... Uh, are we good on time? We have 10 more minutes, okay? Let's, let's read... Uh, I'm reading Ephesians 5, okay? Marriage. See then, this is for married couples. See then that you walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wife, wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Okay, that means let the relationship between you and the husband. Third party interference. I've seen every time there's third party interference just crazy. Now, I understand in church and in the council, you know, that's the best thing where husband and wife, you are moving ahead uh, in the Lord and you have some counsel from people who know the Lord, where you're getting godly counsel and that's fine in that covering. But this is talking about, look at what it says here, why submit to your own husbands as to the, what does it say? As to the Lord, you're doing it. To the Lord, whatever anyone is doing here, whether you're arranging chairs, whether you're doing worship, whether you're doing the tech thing, everything you're doing, you're doing it to Christ. If you do that seriousness, whatever you do for Christ, he always multiplies it back. When Peter gave him his boat, he just said, let me use your boat. Jesus just preached a message on the boat. And what is it that whatever Peter was looking for in that boat, for maybe a whole week or two weeks, he got it in five seconds. Let down your net for the big catch. Whatever you give unto the Lord, it never comes back with multiplication. It'll always be added, tripled, multiplied, not even added, multiplied back to you, okay? I put a, we needed someone for communion. It's not church who's looking out for communion, it's Christ who's looking out. Who wants, who's, if job, Jesus had to recruit two people, who, who would run forward? Jesus is recruiting. Who wants to be on his boat? Okay. Look at this. It says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, also as Christ is the head of the church. What does Christ do for the church? He builds it up. He's nourishing the church. Not to be head over her so I can rule you. I told you before the fall, when Adam saw her, he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. It's oneness. It's not so that I can be dictator over you. That's just abusing that scripture. Okay? As Christ is head of the church and he is the savior of the body. <laughs> He's loving her. Okay? Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. I believe really love. If you see yourself and love each other, you'll be doing all of these things naturally. Okay? Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Gave himself up for her. Okay? That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. One of the best things that you can do, sometimes you want to say those bad things, say what the word says. <laughs> you have such a bad temper. <laughs> I love it that you're so patient. <laughs> Just say that. Because at least you're speaking life on that person. Yes. Okay? Like really, I wanted to really like, hey, all okay? <laughs> Just <laughs> but I can't drown. <laughs> so I couldn't even give it back. Because if I'm giving back, I'd be giving back in the flesh. Because the sun can't drown. Okay? So I wanted to say it, but it just pissed me off. Okay, but I, I, I believe he was not meant to see me because he was not meant to be my savior. Christ in me was my savior. Yes. Okay, so, okay. S they told me to give review. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I should. 
that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself as a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish so husbands ought to love their wives as their own body he who loves his wife loves himself i believe the more you start i see this in marriage okay when they say christ you love they throw scripture at each other the minute you start drawing your life from the father naturally you become an outflow and an overflow and because of that overflow the wife starts receiving or the husband starts receiving but first it comes out of you receiving that love from the father for yourself okay so if you don't love yourself if you don't understand how much god loves you how can you love the other person so if you find it difficult to love each other what is the root you don't know how much god loves you and so bathe and rest in his love for you take some time out enjoy with the father you know really even though i'm preaching here have your one on one time in the word i have so many people who message to me and i know that they've not heard beloved if they tell me to pray for me pray for them they send me such requests someone else the wife has left has gone with somebody said tell me what to do ask god and then tell me i'm not a guru here to do that i said open up the word he will tell you he will speak have you been in a relationship with the church and not with him i i i feel sad for what what has happened in the church oh, it's not supposed to be like this open the word for yourself and read it says here he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes it and cherishes it just as the lord does the church love yourself celebrate yourself go to a spa enjoy spend some money on yourself okay for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church nevertheless let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband honor each other with your words no matter how bad the person is just honor honor that person you know why because you're doing all things just because the father says so he doesn't deserve the honor but my father says it i'm going to honor i'm going to lift this person because i'm a life giving spirit i'm just going to do this blindly let the father honor his word in my life and then you'll see even as you're doing your own part the father is the one who's doing everything else the father is the one who's changing that person don't go into a relationship if you think that guy is going to change bad mistake i've seen this because they always keep waiting for one day you love that person just as they are right now and you have grace and you're giving that person grace after some time when you learn to love them just who they are you'll realize it doesn't matter and that person changed but it didn't matter but if you're looking for that day then you're not loving them right now just love them if they're not if you think they're going to change you don't like them move away <clears throat> not for married couples i'm talking about for singles okay <laughs> be clear if you're married god's word says together oneness okay two till jesus comes okay in blood relationship with each other this is for uh, single people okay um how many more pages do i have here i have two more pages can i quickly cover it so we don't have to take one more sermon on this Prin principles of marriage okay let's i'm going to read all this so married people listen now concerning the things of which you wrote to me it is good for a man not to touch a woman nevertheless because of sexual immorality so that he doesn't go and lust after somebody else let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her that means this is coming together in oneness where it says you don't own your body the husband owns it and the wife doesn't own her body husband owns it and the husband doesn't own his body the wife owns it okay so do not deprive each other the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does and likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body but the wife does do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that is for fasting or prayer that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self control 
I've seen this, okay? It's just healthy. Between marriage, husband and wife. It's saying, give to each other, okay? Um, but I say this as a confession, not as a commandment, for I wish that all men even were even as I myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another is not. And uh, another in that. Paul is talking about because he was single. Okay, he didn't want to get married, so he's like, <clears throat> I have this gift from God, and I choose to be like this. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. If there are widows, if your husband has passed, if your wife has passed, you want to get married, God says it's okay. Go ahead. If you don't want to get married, it's even better, he says. Okay. Keep your marriage vows. Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, a wife is not to depart from her husband, but if she, but even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, believe that means in Christ, who is not a believer yet, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband, unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, the believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now they are holy. You know why the unbelieving wife sanctifies the uh, the uh, the believing wife sanctifies the unbelieving husband and the believing husband sanctifies the unbelieving wife because they are one. You are one. Okay? Now see this. And it is saying so that people who are married, you got saved, you came to know about Jesus. Okay? The wife got saved, knows about Jesus, but the husband doesn't. Or the husband got saved, knows about Jesus, but the wife doesn't. The Bible says that if they want to still live with you and they're still not leaving, but they want to live, then don't divorce. Let them live with you because you are sanctifying them. And I believe after some time, they come to that faith because they're actually draw drawing out on the life that is in you. It's in Christ, okay? Now see this, but if the unbeliever departs, they've got saved, but now you got saved, but now they want to leave you. It says here, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? That means don't leave them. Because how do you know that they won't get saved? They'll come into the kingdom. Okay? This is talking for people who are already married. Okay? People who are not, please, trust me, marry somebody who knows. It might be easy later on. First, it just gets more difficult later on. I've always seen it. I've been counseling couples, even being single, but I've seen the ones who wanted it fast, quick, by the clock, got married on the right time, right age, didn't do it God's way. Today, I'm ministering to them. And what is the one prayer? Let's bring them in to the faith. How about if you had just waited for some time? Okay? Now, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. If you've done it, I believe God will still work things, all things out for your good, okay? Verse 39, a wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes. What does it say after that? Only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. But she is happy if she remains as she is, according to my judgment. Paul is saying that. And I think I also have the Spirit of God, okay? 1 Peter 3, submissions to husbands. 1 Peter 3, verse 3, wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the con conduct of their wives, when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. That means they may not know Christ, but just because seeing you, the life that you're living, that they will get transformed just by looking at you. They may not know the word, but they'll come to faith just by you coming in. I've told you, your job is Tony, you don't forget you're a son in all things. If your relationship is constantly with the word, constantly with the word, with the father, in all things you will overcome. Whatever that thing is, na, it will come into subjection to you. Whether it was water trying to drown me, <laughs> is my relationship with the lifeguard? No, thank God it wasn't. 
that is Christ in me who told me just relax, chill. My foot went up and then I came on the show somehow. But it's with him and in all things you'll realize if your relationship is with the father, with the word, then the word holds you. You don't is because when things get collapsed in marriages or in your life is because somewhere you left the word. You got absorbed in your marriage. In the busyness of life, the children came, you got in the mundane activities and things that God calls just flesh. And then you forgot that one thing that was important, to sit at his feet. That means just drawing from him your relationship, you forgot you're a son. And now everything is over, overpowering you. Come back to the position of your son. Don't forget who you are. Stand up for the truth, the very problems, whether it's your husband, he's gone with another wife, everything, whatever craziness is happening, it will begin to submit to you because you have not forgotten who you are. It all comes by, and I've, I'm speaking this because we, we are living it. We are seeing testimonies in marriages where the, the husband or the woman is coming into the place of a son, standing up for the truth, what she believes in. The husband is not running away. He's getting closer to her. The, uh, you know, the wife is not going away. She's coming closer to him. Because you started speaking the truth. The truth sometimes looks like this. It looks like a storm. But it will lead to still waters. Okay? Always remember that. My mom and everyone here after 10 years, it, it was crazy when I used to speak the truth in the house. But I stood because my relationship was with the word. I'm not going by what I see. The world would tell me, shut your mouth. Are you crazy? The world tells me, shut my mouth, I open my mouth more. I would play the sermon, I would close the door, but I would blast it inside loudly so that everyone can hear. And this is not condemnation word. This is life giving word. The father loves you. Who doesn't want to hear that? And then I would play all of that. Today they're all in the kingdom, 99% of them. It's because the son didn't forget he's a son in everything. All relationships, always remember you're a mother later, you're a husband later, you're a wife later. You are a brother, sister later. You are a son first. Minister the truth in love. As a son first, all relationships will stand. They will lead to life. Okay? Uh, 1 Peter, th what was I reading? Yeah, by your good conduct, the wives will be won over. Uh, husbands will be won over, whatever, whichever. Do not let your adornment be merely outward. That means don't just deck up everything arranging the hair, wearing gold or putting the fine, that's all fine, you can do all of that. Rather be the hidden person of the heart which the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner in former times the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. A word to husbands. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding. Give honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. I love it that it says, the word says as Christ that we are joined heirs with Christ. Joined heir means what? Upar niche, up and down means what? One. Husband and wife you are one. So, together in all things. Okay? Not up and down. 1 Timothy 5. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This is just wisdom. It says that husbands, be providers. As a son, both of y'all be providers in the family, in the marriage. Okay? Quickly, let me just go over if I've taught everything. Yeah, another thing I'd like to tell women and men, dress, celebrate yourself. Wearing makeup and wearing no makeup doesn't mean one is holy and one is not. <laughs> you can marry somebody who doesn't wear makeup and then you get married and they'll turn out to be just, I've seen this. One guy came to me and I like that girl because she doesn't wear makeup. I said, okay. He got married, got divorced also. Okay, big thing, it's all in the flesh. Celebrate yourself. It's okay. Okay, one wants to wear, one doesn't want to wear. I've always seen the ones who don't condemn the ones who do. I've never seen ulta. I have no problem with people who don't dress up. Okay, but the people who don't dress up have a problem with me. 
you dress up. Right? I want to celebrate myself. I live every day like it's my birthday. Just celebrate yourself because Christ celebrates you. Enjoy yourself. Value yourself. If you don't value yourself, how do you expect somebody else to value you? Okay? Celebrate yourself. Get up every day. Dress up during the lockdown. I would deck up just to go and put the dustbin out. So my watchman would see me coming in heels, coming down. And what is she doing? Took the dustbin, went and put it in the thing. And I came back up. I got, and then I would go to nature's basket and I would see people coming in their pajamas. It's a lockdown. It's not a pajama party. Sitting at home means still dress up and celebrate yourself. You know, Really start doing that. You'll see that other people catch on to your celebration. They will want to look good because God celebrates you, okay? Value yourself, guys. Invest in yourselves also. Go for a manicure, pedicure. I'm just saying these, these are just wisdom things, okay? It's because I'm just telling you, take care of the Father's most prized possession. And if you value yourself, others will see like, wow, how much does this person love themselves, okay? It's because the Father loves you. And it says, if you don't love yourself, how will you love somebody else? It says it in the word. So start loving yourself first, okay? And you'll see all of that love overflow on others also, okay? So um, have, have you learned things? People in love, I believe that this year God will add those who want to get added, okay? But uh, as a son, your whole life is a finished work. So someone else's timeline may not be your timeline. You may not want it to be your timeline. But I believe if you're hearing this and you have a desire, Okay, so just thank Father that you are in the kara, you're always in the right place at the right time, that it's the Father who makes it all happen for you. And even as you rest, the Father will add all things to you. Okay, but in all of that, when you get it, don't forget who you are. Okay, let what was added to you remain as an addition, as a gift throughout your whole life if you don't forget you're a son. Okay, so um, come on, let's give a spiritual tithe. Stand. Just say, Father, I thank you. I'm a son in your kingdom. Jesus, you're my high priest. And right now, I give you a tithe, a thanksgiving of all the increase and life you brought to my soul. Yeah, just begin to worship Jesus with everything that you heard. Oh, Rahadari Araba, Shikla Rataraba, Stiri Aranama, Bahadari Araba, Kulo Roroba. Father, I just thank you. I thank you that it is you who adds all things. I thank you for the gift even of singleness to some who want it. And Father, I thank you for the gift, Father, that you have given of those who desire to have um, marriages and life partners. Father, I thank you that it's you who are adding it, that you cause the right place at the right time for sons because our whole life is a finished work. And I just thank you for marriages already already people who are in marriages, that you are the father who turns water into wine. I thank you that you're filling your father, your sons with your love. And even as they're remembering and they're, they're absorbing all the love that you have for them, they're able to lavish it out on their spouse, father. And I just thank you that it's by blood that you hold all things together, even our marriages. And I just speak your peace and blood over it in Jesus' name. Amen.